Hey everyone, I'm Selena for Who is Jesus Today. How's it going everyone? Uh, I'm going to get into a scripture here, Galatians, the sixth chapter. Read not all of it, but, but some of it in here. And I'm going to tell you a little more about my uh, Christian background and experience um, in the type of, of churches that I attended. I know sometimes, you know, I realize that I do not just open up and share a lot because I need to protect people, uh, not only myself, but a family. Um, you know, you have to perfect uh, to protect your uh, loved ones um, and certain things I don't say about uh, relatives or friends on my channel. Uh, there will be a time when someone when when they may come on this channel to introduce themselves. That's true as God may have something on their heart for them to share. Um, I also, there are some uh, things about my uh, journey that I am have not opened up and revealed yet, but I'm going to share a little more about my uh, history and Christianity um, when I was a, a younger, more so up to now. And um, yeah, I also say that I have been a terror a territorial and I moved around in different places it doesn't mean I didn't have a church a pastor and accountability every place I've lived I've been under Christian leadership when I lived in Colombia I had Christian a connection and leadership and there was a church that I attended I was not there for very long time but I did make a Christian connection as well as went to more than one church there when I lived in uh, Santiago de Chile I actually attended at times a vineyard church and I had uh, people that I was also uh, connected with in Christian fellowship when I lived in of Philadelphia I attended a church called Spirit and Truth Fellowship and yes and that um, is a, uh, a church that really was outreach to the community of North Philly and beyond and I was a part of that and I lived in Portland and I attended a church um, downtown of Portland uh, actually uh, since this particular uh, pastor is quite uh, public, uh, I went sometimes to uh, John Mark's church, downtown Portland. A lot of young people are there. Not a place I would uh, have uh, plants, but I actually do uh, respect and I um, want to say yes. I recognize Pastor John Mark as a man of God who's been with the Lord for a while. And I went to a church out in Gresham, Oregon, for those of you who happen to know that. So, yeah, my life has been, you know, missional. I've been called to territories, but not alone. I have connected to different types of communities. And um, each one has been uh, different. Also, my assignment has been to encourage and support church leaders some of us are called as intercessors so when we show up we're all called to intercede I, I would say that yes but for some uh, God has, has called out is perhaps more a uh, missional and we will show up at different uh, regions of the world and territories and we'll get connected to a church and a community there we get to know of the society that we are living in and then we begin to allow God just to use us to uh, encourage to uplift and at times to also bring a correction and love and that's what I'm going to talk about some now a correction and love uh, because we all need that and love is not weak and flaky in fact it's very honest and forward but it's how it's done you see and so yeah 
Um, this I realize you don't really get to know a lot about the people on YouTube. Um, and I think that all of us should be wise and safe not to open up every page of our lives, not to say, hey, I live uh, now and um, I live, I'm now staying in Salinas, California. I go to this church on this street. Well, you're not going to get that out of me, even if it's true. <laughs> okay? Because this is a public platform for the whole entire world. But something that I've done in the past, I will call it out and say, yeah, I've gone to this place or that place. But even in that, I'm not here to make uh, people who I've met in my life public unless it's okay with them. I mentioned Pastor John Mark because he is quite a public online. You can Google and see what he does. Um, the same way if you mention a Franklin Graham, right? I mean, the world knows about um, a Franklin Graham, as they did his father, a Billy Graham. But there are people you have uh, connected with in Christian circles that they're not a public. And so why should you make them public? Out of respect. But uh, I'm going to speak about a pastor that I had, one of my first uh, pastors in uh, types of churches that I went. And he's deceased. But um, I'm going to uh, uh, speak a little bit about this uh, particular uh, Christian environment. Um, sometimes I will not say the exact church um, even, even now because I... I realize how there are some that draw really conclusions and you, you can say what, what church you attend and you may hear in a week or so, you know, there's say heresy in this particular church, you know, they get the name and you tell them the pastor, you know, like, like I just you know, I put out there, Pastor John Mark with all love and respect to your brother, you know, he's already public, but I'm just saying, like, you know, people, and I do not attend that ch church now, I was more or less uh, passing through, but you'll, but you'll hear that um, there's something wrong with that particular church now, or that leader, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna make that easy for people as a YouTuber, I'm not gonna make it easy for you to troll anyone's life out there that uh, I've known and connected with. And this is not all, this is not uh, everyone, just a small, I feel a small uh, population of people are into this uh, type of sport. And I'm not going to um, just open up everything at once, not even about my family and my uh, a private life. But I would say that the way I began uh, Christianity, uh, I would not be even uh, looking the way I look now with even say earrings on. I still don't do my. I don't. I'm, I'm not into nail polish. And I like my nails cut low. But I began where it was a lot of emphasis placed on how women should look and dress, not just in church but at all times. So um, yeah. So, no makeup, uh, I'm not talking about modesty, I'm talking about a clean face, no makeup. If you do have, if maybe if you, if you do your brows, that won't show, but if there's really color added to your face, then that's not your face, right? You have added something to it. Um, I mean, blush and foundations and, and lipstick and, and, and all of that and eyeshadow. Okay, I'm not condemning this. <laughs> okay, I am not in that uh, place. But I still want to be modest. But I'm saying that's how I began. I did not uh, wear pants. Pants was a no, no, no. Uh, I failed my gym classes. I didn't do so well in gym because I refused to put on even shorts. And I think it was like a girl's gym. I think it wasn't, was it unisex? Was it, I don't know if the girl and, bo girl and the boys were together. So I did not know wear pants. And, um, you know, yeah. And 
or jewelry. So there may be some people out there today, and there's a whole lot of Christians. I would say I would say the majority of Christian women worldwide do wear some degree of cosmetics. And even if they don't, it's because it's just really preference, but it's not their religion. Okay? Um, at large, uh, Christian women would usually have on earrings of some sort. That was not allowed. Okay? Nor open toe shoes. Nor not wearing stockings. Okay? I mean, talk about the summertime, ladies. And there was we oh, there was also a head covering. Okay, not the entire head, but make sure you cover the top. So now are there a scriptures that a pastor can ref say refer to to uh, uh validate that it is in the Bible, what I just said to you. Uh, yes, there are scriptures you could find that would uh, definitely seem as if it is exactly pertaining to what I just said. I won't get into that today. I won't get into the doctrine. Those That, that was a doctrine that um, I was under. By the way, I still most of the time don't wear pants because it's a preference but it's not my righteousness nor am I against any other woman who's wearing slacks as long as it's slacks designed for women if it's a garment designed for a man I still say it's wrong but the truth is not only pants are designed for a man you can put on a jacket that's designed for a woman and you could put on a jacket that's designed for a man. You see? What was the intent behind the garment? And who is it for? So I'm just saying that. Um, that is, those are my early beginnings. And uh, later on, I attended for a, a long time a large church in New York City where I have been blessed and blessed and blessed. And I will talk more about that uh, later. But um, that was for over, say, 16 uh, years or more. And the leadership, there was accountability, responsibility, integrity. And I really learned from these uh, leaders the model of how authentic no leadership should be in the house of God based on the Word of God. And I've always say, you know, I, I give honor where honor is due in recognition, but to avoid idolizing people. But I really appreciate when someone sets for me a standard and a model of how to live out the gospel, of how to be a shepherd. A shepherd's heart and I learned from these shepherds what does the shepherd heart look like more and more and it's a heart that's for the people and not just driven for yourself and your own gain and recognition and power and profit I would say in any of the nomination that person is is not real a false I'm not saying they're not a Christian, but probably they should not be called a shepherd. Because you cannot be a shepherd and be for you all about yourself and not for the, the people. That's in the book of Ezekiel about how the shepherds have, what I'm going to paraphrase, how they have neglected the flock. They're not even seeking them, but they're feeding themselves. So I learned more and more the example of one who has a shepherd heart and that taught me as God has been uh, personally preparing me more uh, for that but not alone not alone so don't say that I am a pastor of a church alone or anything like that no I'm not 
I set a shepherd's heart. I don't need a pastor's title. I don't need the pulpit. I don't need a mic to be someone who's in the house of God sitting next to a sister who is hurting on the inside. Who you can tell that although they're there, they're really not there. And so to me, for me to put my own uh, problems and concerns aside, and with the shepherd's heart, how can I uh, reach out and minister today to this person, regardless of what I am dealing with? So I've been in training for that for a while. Uh, you don't have to be a pastor to have a heart that functions like a shepherd where you care for the flock and for the loss. Um, but one thing I have to say, it's so sad if you call yourself a pastor, a church leader, and you don't have that for the people. And it's more about you. That's error. If you think that what you wear and how you dress is going to be your righteousness and you're, you're better than someone else who doesn't actually look like that, then that's also error and it's wrong. In the same way, there are some that won't wear maybe slacks, but they'll wear makeup. And that's fine. I, I have, I, I, you know, you can do what you want there. Um, and, and then there are those that um, might... Um, say, well, you know, you cannot wear any makeup or jewelry or paint your nails either. You see, so sometimes, you know, we have to be careful that our standards are not always God's standards. We may feel personal uh, conviction and set certain types of standards for righteousness, but it's not, you know. And at the same time, I believe in the Holy Spirit convicting us and guiding us on what to wear and and not to wear. So I don't have to be told not to put on a mini skirt. I didn't wear that when I was a teenager. <laughs> so, so what in the world am I going to do now with a mini skirt? Uh, I, 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 you, don't, you don't have to ever think that I, I need to be instructed on that. Because the spirit that is in me it's, you know, this is the Spirit of God. I'm not, I never liked that type of fashion. But uh, I, I was trained that the, it has to be, you know, just below the knee at least. <laughs> you know, uh, does everyone in the church abide by that? No. And if a, a woman comes into your church with a mini skirt on, are you going to send her away? I remember that the ladies would give uh, a woman a uh, uh, like a scarf to cover her legs or say like I guess a handkerchief if they sat in the front but you're not going to send them away but there are some church circles where you could actually wear anything even maybe hot pants do I uh, promote that no I don't God's got to do some business with them right the same way God has to do some business with those who think that if a, if a woman is not dressed a certain way, that she can't get a prayer through to heaven. Is that true? If a woman doesn't, if a woman is wearing, say, earrings or she has on some lipstick or some powder on her face, that uh, can heaven, can heaven, will heaven really open up for her? Can she reach heaven? You go on and on and on. <laughs> and there are times you go to a church where it seems like everything goes. And that's the extreme. And then there's the other ex extreme where it seems like everything is wrong. Just about. Like if you laugh too hard at a movie, it's wrong. And I think we should be concerned about what type of things that we, enter that we let enter into us as entertainment. Um, being like, you know... Idolizing sports and celebrities with no, f I, I think it's wrong to be a fan. I don't, I don't think so. Keeping things in their proper perspective, not making it, you know, legalism. So we need the spirit of God. None of us got it perfect. 
I started in a great church of a man of God. Uh, I would say he was strict, but still I appreciate it. He had no problem telling you, if you don't get right with God and hell, you will lift up your eyes. <laughs> I remember hearing that. That's those are first. That's like the, the sermons that I remember the most and never forgot. In hell, you will lift up your eyes. You don't hear a lot of people saying that today. Even the church where I attended for 16 years, it was great. The pastor does talk about hell. But I'm saying that the first one I had, uh, he made sure you hear loud and clear that there's a hell. That's the destination if you're not right with God. He was very, very clear about that. But so, so is God's word. Do all preachers convey it the same? No. Can I say that some need to convey it more? Absolutely. Absolutely. Has anybody out there ever, ever gone to a perfect church and met a perfect person? I don't think you can say that, can you? So I just want you to know, I just want to put that out there because I realize when people don't have some information, they may draw some conclusions that are totally false. And so I would like to say, yeah, I've been around some uh, strong uh, Christian circles and I had some, I've seen men and women of God that I have been inspired and encouraged to want to go further and, and with God. As, as well so I've been blessed I've been blessed in that way and I've also had to come across some situations where it was like kind of lukewarm environments and uh, almost like people uh, they want to say that everything's about grace grace and love and it's there's no conviction going to a party and dancing and getting a little drunk or high and see I'm I'm not for that, but I also do not say, well, you're not a Christian at all. No, I, I cannot, I'm not going to say that they have not accepted Christ or they don't walk with God. But uh, we, we, we know that a whole lot of people need some stronger uh, conviction in how they live out their life as an example in Jesus. But we're going to come across all of this. That's why... God's word says this in Galatians 6 brethren if a man is overtaken in any trespass you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness considering yourself lest you also be tempted bear one another's burdens and do and so fulfill the law of Christ for if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is a, a nothing he deceives himself but let each one examine his own work and then he will have a rejoicing in himself alone and not in another for each one shall bear his own load let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. And that's for all of us. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary, okay, while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Don't lose heart today, body of Christ, in the United States of America and the world. We can lose heart just with one another. You got one pastor saying, you better take off all that jewelry. Don't color your hair. Don't wear open-toed shoes. But he loves God. You love God. What's going on, right? 
You go into one church and why are all the people wearing jeans and sneakers on a Sunday? You're like, what? What's going on? For some people, that is a terrible act before the Lord. I'm going to be honest with you. This is where I am today in 2023 in my Christian journey. I believe the Spirit of God can fall on a woman who is covered from head to toe. And you don't see anything but her face. I'm being honest with you. I believe the Spirit of God can fall on a woman who who just what who, who will not wear slacks. I believe the Spirit of God can fall on a woman who has on earrings or no earrings. I believe the Spirit of God could fall on a, 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 a say a person who's wearing a beautiful what you call a Sunday a church dress and one who really comes in in jeans and a t-shirt. I believe the Spirit of God can really fall on us anywhere, anytime, and on anyone. I say yes, those of us who are born again, we're born of the Spirit. So we should be walking in the Spirit, not to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. But sometimes we have human man type of mandates as well that we mix in there, and we call that spiritual or righteousness. But you cannot say that a, 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 a woman that enters your prayer meeting who's wearing a jeans and a t-shirt is really any less uh, spiritual than one who comes in there with a long dress. If we're really going to follow the scriptures and we're, and we're going to come now not into uh, the bondage of legalism, then we're going to have to say God can pour out his spirit on a, a sister in jeans and on a sister in a long dress. That's what I believe, to tell you the truth, because I've seen it. I've seen it. Now, there are times where there needs to be correction. When people are presenting themselves in ways that are... Um, can cause people to stumble and yes that's why we also should be really concerned and not let our goods be evil spoken of you see but if you're going to make a distinction between jeans and a t-shirt and a song with a, a long dress who's going to experience more of the presence of God I believe that's error but that's why we have the sixth chapter of Galatians when I'm in error and when you are in are an error and sometimes here and there we all can be right brethren if a man is overtaken in any a trespass now we're talking about sin but you know sometimes you know you look at people but you just don't agree with with how they look you think the way that they dress today is sin that doesn't mean that God thinks that but that's what you're thinking you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So even, even I, I know this is referring to trespass, I want to take it out of a context. Sin is sin. But there are times when, you know, just because uh, someone doesn't have your, say, fashion idea, that you would come at them you know and the spirit of self-righteousness and go well you know you shouldn't be looking like that you know you know if God meant for you to be a redhead he would have let you be born with red hair I've, I've, I've heard that before it's kind of old back oh yeah oh yeah I've heard that and so yeah <laughs> I heard quite a few things and that's why I just want to say we got to be able to know how to approach each other at any time um, as the people of God and for those who do not walk with God you know and I believe that God's Word wants us to know how to do that in love it doesn't mean that we just let everything go and dismiss it and everything is good we're all right with God no a lot of times we're not all right with God but God wants us to still reach out to each other in the spirit 
of gentleness, knowing very well that we ourselves can also become caught up in something that's not right or speak something in error. So that's the word for today. Gave you a little bit of my church history and background and some of the my early beginnings and what I believed and held very true for my life as a Christian. Has there been some changes? Yes. More on that later. Okay. Thank you. You can like and subscribe. Until next time. Shalom.